People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're live, we're live. It's morning time, people. After this, I'm actually going to go for a workout. That's why I've actually got my hood up. I was actually going to do my workout before this. Um, and I thought, let me just go live. But it is what it is. I can't lie. I'm a hoodie guy. I feel most comfortable with my hood up, sat here like this. This is how I typically am when I'm preparing content. So I thought I'm going to stay exactly like this. Why not stay true to myself? Um, before we get into it, as usual, people, please make sure you're hitting the like button. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. It doesn't cost a thing. Please make sure you check out the pinned message that I've pinned in the to the live chat it's not for free um you know i'm not just putting it there for the sake of it the reason is there's to notify you lot obviously in relation to the live watch along everton versus arsenal live from 4 45 i'll be you know providing live commentary in game talking about it pre-game obviously i'll touch on it post game and you know after that we go into another live stream where i have my my proper reaction to the game and things like that so including this um this live stream we're on right now there's two more to come, people. So there's a lot of content. Make sure you've got your reminders on. Make sure you've hit the like button. You know, make sure you've got your you've got everything you need to do. Check out the um the description, you know, check out the description. It's got all my socials as well. I'm, I do a very good job. Or I'd like to think I do a very good job of telling you when the next live stream is, giving you a little bit of time. So, yeah, man, if, if reminders keeps letting you down, make sure you're all over everything else, people. Please hit the like button. As I said, it really doesn't cost a thing and it means the world because every like means I'm more likely to, to be in someone's recommenda recommended videos or recommendations, better yet. And as we approach 30k subs, people, you know, I'm what? Just need about 200 odd more before we get there, people. So I'm trying to attack this thing aggressively. That was my target before the end of the season. I'm trying to do it before the end of the year. I don't think it's going to happen, but that's what I want, people. I really want to try and do it. And, you know, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. I'm seeing a couple of you, a couple of you already in the live chat. It means the world. Big up yourself, Total Football. DG, good morning from Nigeria. Big up all my Nigerian fans and all the Nigerian ones locked in. I hope you're all doing well and safe. I'm not too sure of the time zone where you guys are, but it's morning over here. You know, if you're in America or New Zealand and all of these other places, I apologise for the time zone difference. I know some of you is either late at night or early in the morning, but football doesn't sleep, neither does DG. Um Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Keep up the good work, brother. I will, will do, my guy. Will do, man. To know I have guys like you in my corner supporting the thing, trying to push me and, and whatnot. I can't do nothing else but go hard and go aggressive for what I really want. Omer said, DG looking fresh. I'm not too sure this is what I would call as looking fresh. My hair is a mess. I want to cut my hair, but I'm well aware it's Christmas next week, so I might as well just do it next week. I'm not sure I'm looking fresh, but thank you very much for the praise. Big up yourself as well, my guy as well. Oli, good morning to you as well, fella. Hope you're doing well and safe. Come on, man. Like Omer said, can we get to 30K before the end of the year? It would mean the world, man. Please, man, please, let's do up that one. Big up yourself, Robert. Nice to see you're locked in and doing well and safe as well. You know, I've got my island tugs in the building. Big up yourself, golfing Guna. I too hope Arsenal win today in the same way we was hoping against Southampton and before that. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it can get very long if we don't claim three points. Um, You know, thank you very much. Hey, South Africa in the building as well. We've got Dubai. Hey, I wish I was in Dubai. Dubai looks lit. Big up yourself. But like you said, it's afternoon over them sides there. You know, Omar as well. It's afternoon down him sides. Big up yourself, P, because like you said, you're a United fan. you got nothing to do with Arsenal, but you're a fan of good content and a fan of real football content. So that's why you're here. And I appreciate all of you lot, whether you're Arsenal fans, football fans in general. I even see a couple Spurs fans. Whatever's drew you, drew you to me, I appreciate it. Big up the members. Please make sure you're having a butchers or better yet, for those who don't understand what I'm talking about, having a look of the membership page. Yo, and I said, another day, hopefully not another L. To be fair, we didn't have an L in our last time out. So who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows? We might we might have half a chance there, really and truly. Andreas is buzzing with the title. Overmaster replaced Edu Awa to, to Arsenal next month. Gallas wants... Um, Arteta sacks. We're going to get into all of that, man. We're going to get into all of that. We're going to get into all of that in a second, man. There's no rush, though. It's 16 past 11. It's a long day for me because, as I said, there's about three live streams to do. This is the life I signed up for, people. Big up yourself, Dazza. You know, good evening to all my Australian ones out there as well. So it's the perfect time for you guys. How to be a member. Check out the YouTube membership tab under this video. The way you lot are viewing it, literally under the video, it says join. Click the join thing. Um, 
and and you and and you go go from there really and truly you know simply is it is what it is man would you take a draw Hey, the way we are playing right now, if you offer me a draw before the game, of course I'll take a draw because Everton are sit, sit what, full fifth in the table, we're 15th, they're scoring a lot of goals that, you know, we can barely defend from aerial situations. They've got Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison and obviously they've got technical ability. I would take a draw, you know, but, you know, logically, but moving away from that, let's be fair, you know, again, like I said, I'll take a point, but on the other hand, not losing would do great for us, but a point isn't going to do anything for us, really and truly. A win isn't going to do anything for us, but just take some temporary pressure off the team. You know, fans can at least be happy based on that game. We all know what's plastered around the ma ma major media outlets and fan channels and whatnot when Arsenal don't win. So it, it can get very long against Everton. Um, The only reason I want to go for a win even more beyond the obvious is because, again, they're still a good unit. But when, when Everton, for me, have, like us, when they've missed a one, two individuals, they have struggled. And today we go into it without Partey and, and Gabriel. But off the top of my head, Everton might not be, might not, again, this could be Carlo Ancelotti mind games, but James, Tijane, um, Fabian Delph. Um, there's quite a few Everton players that could be, Allen, there's quite a few Everton players that might be missing, you know. Uh, it could be the end of our tattoo. It could get very long if we don't win. You know, if we don't win, it can get long, man. It can get very long. It can get very long for us. It can get very long for the manager. Um, it would be very long. And, and I don't know where we go from that, um, to be fair with you. You know, like you said, less than 200 subs away from 30k. Surely the DG Nation could get that done before Christmas. I'd like to hope so, man. I'd like to hope so. Big up yourself, AJ. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. Um, and and Wari said, I have faith in Holden in the air today, done well against Southampton. Holden's one of those players that I think sometimes he plays poorly, sometimes he plays well. He is a bit hot and cold. I think people people either like him or don't like him and he can be a bit hot and cold. But Holden, would, I'd go Holden, Louise for me. You know, Marie played last night for the under-23s, as did Saliba. So they, don't, they won't be involved, um, as did Callum Chambers. So this probably means a back three of potentially David Louise, Holden and Mustafi, if not Kieran Tierney, um, you know, in that back three, in which obviously brings Saka to left back. But we might go with Tierney at left back, maybe, I don't know, um, to try and deal with that Coleman threat and then go with three out-and-out -out defenders. But for me... I would go with a back five, to be fair. I think against Wolves, um, against Spurs, against games like this, I don't feel we've had enough time to be training a back four. I don't think Arteta's done enough. I think we're naturally, when you're poor defensively, when you're when you're when you're poor defensively, you might as well over you might as well crowd out the opposition, really and truly. Um, so yeah, man, um, we might as well, man. Um so apologies, Anva and and Avta. Apologies. I Forgive me, man. No, no disrespect intended for mispronunciations. But yeah, man. Hopefully we can we can get something we can get something done today, man. Hopefully we can get three points. If we don't get three points, it's the same old, same old, and that we don't. We it's long. We all know, you know, it's ultimately going to fall to the feet of Arteta. So it's going to get long if we don't get three points. A lot of people are expecting it will be to have something to say, and you know, it will be. I agree with you that we should switch up the back five and what switch up to a back five, but. A lot of you in the comments are saying the Wobie might score. And to be fair, he might, you know, if he saw his former teammate Theo Walcott, it can get long, man. Um, is that the case for him being in the under 23s for the whole time? I'm not too sure. Um, I would like to see Martinelli be involved, but if the man isn't fit, then there's no point really and truly. If the man's not fully fit, don't bring him because we, this is what we did with Partey and how long do we leave Partey for? As much as I love Martinelli, don't get it twisted. I want him in the team, especially with these duds. Let's bring him back when he's fit and proper and ready. And again, I'm no medical man. So if he's past fit and he travels with the team, then I have to assume he's passed the necessary test. But at the same time, yeah, I just want him to be back, you know, because it's a battle against Everton. We've got a war of a season. We're going to need Martinelli. I want Martinelli to come and provide some serious headache to players, you know, because we're always talking about who plays on the left and this like that. Martinelli's coming, you know, really and truly, you know, the only Brazilian winger I acknowledge at this club, the only one that plays like one, in my humble opinion. Um, so we'll have to see, we'll have to see what it throws up and we'll have to see what happens, people, really and truly. Um, I need to get my Google Doc up before we get into what we need to get into, people. I really... Should have had that up and ready. No, that is Ian Wright and that's transfer news. That's actually not what we want. What is the actual name of this thing? Apologies, people. I'm still here, as you can see. 
trying to just find my Google Doc, simply put, that we actually need to talk about with people. I've made a mess of this and I'm trying to rectify it really quickly. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. AFC, let's go to that. Remove that. What else we got? All right, so let's skip. Let's scroll straight down to there. Please make sure you're hitting the like button, people. I'm seeing 120 of you in here. Junior Gunner has said, DG, do you... Do you hope Arsenal look for a more experienced coach that wants to play fluid football next season? I think Arteta wants to. Um, I just think the manager needs to be backed. I do think Arteta has a lot of things he needs to be held accountable for. And if he leaves, I'm not going to cry. But for me personally, it doesn't really matter if we're going to get a young manager or an experienced manager. It's going to be more of the same stuff. Um, as long as as long as long the, the necessary powers that be control this club, really and truly. Please make sure you're hitting the like button, people. Also, please make sure, you know, you're checking the pin tweet because that's where you're going to get the information for my next live stream. I'll be doing a watch along for the Arsenal versus Everton, the Everton versus Arsenal game live on my channel from four, from quarter to, four, quarter to five, better yet. Um, so, yeah, man, we'll have to see. Touch the touch the like button. I, I don't know if we're getting touched next, last night, um, this today, um, Omar, but hopefully it's not it. DG with your docs. I find it much easier, man. I find it much easier. Um, I don't know. It doesn't, for me, I don't even look at the manager. I don't know because it doesn't matter if you get a trainer manager, a more experienced manager. Why the man at the top is in, is in, is, is in power, not too much is going to change, man. I'm tired of going after the, the puppets and things like that. The most hardworking pundit out there, big up. I'm trying to, you know, hard work is something that's always been part of my forte. I'm trying to work smart now. And I've really been looking at ways to, you know, rank higher on YouTube, get more views and the rest of it. Because I know I'm A1, but I need to get out there now, man. And although this time next year, last year, sorry, I was on 17,000 subscribers. And what, we've we've probably doubled that really and truly. My maths is poor, but at the same time, or we're touching double it or getting up to it. But um. Need to just better that now. How can I grow quicker? How can I do things easier? You know, how can I, you know, working smart? Because nobody just wants to grind for the sake of grinding. Do you get it? Um, so, yeah, like late J Money said, you know, big up all the Twitch gang. Please make sure you're subscribed over at Twitch, Deluded187. We do need a win today. We do need a win today, man. We do need a win today. Simon has said, "What? what's up, DG? I'm worried, mate. Struggling to see a way out. My feeling is we went for Arteta as he was the cheap option. We went for Arteta because Arteta's got no clout like that. You know, this is as good as a job for, for Arteta as it was for Arsenal. Arteta stands to benefit from this role in that he's been thrown in at the deep end. There's been a bag of stuff he has to deal with. Whether he's a success at Arsenal or elsewhere, it's going to make him stronger. Obviously, I don't. he rejected the job 12 months ago, so I don't know if he thought he was ready. Um, I don't know if he thought it was ready. I don't know if they promised they didn't promise one thing and they're prepared to promise it now. Personally, I don't know, but I, there must have been something. I do think Arteta has less of a room to stand in. You know, you look at Carlo Ancelotti, you look at the wages Carlo's getting, you know, you're not gonna ever and are not gonna put that outlay on Carlo if they're not gonna back him properly. And you saw what he did with the with the market. Arsenal didn't have a market like that. Do you get it? Jose Mourinho, another one linked with Arsenal. Again, look at the wages Spurs gave Jose Mourinho. And I'd say Spurs had their best summer as a non-Spurs non fan looking in in a while. My point being, both these clubs, you know it's costly bringing in these managers. You know these managers are risking their rep reputation coming to both clubs. You know that both of these managers... Um, the club needs the managers more than the other way around. So make it worth it, it, worth it. If there's a project to buy into, they'll buy into it. Carlo could have come Arsenal and I would have loved it. But at the same time, when he's saying, I need a midfielder, I need this and that, you don't want to be dealing with what the market we've had, you know, um, the, the nonsense we is coming with. The same for Jose. So this is what, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, for me personally, that's why these experienced men are not coming to Arsenal really and truly. Big up yourself, Ransom. 30k by New Year's. Let's end the year strong. Keep up the good work, bro. Hope so, man. Hope so. Hope so, man. Hope so. Um, you know, I'm not too. I don't have any affiliates to to edu. You know, like loving the club isn't enough to me. I'm sure everybody loves the club. Um, you know. With Overmars, you hear only good things about Overmars. You know, he's been angling for this job for a while, for what it's worth. In fact, with that, we might as well get in, we might as well get into it. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. It's sharing screen time, people. So let's share the screen. Where are we going? We're going there. Share the screen. So let's start off firstly. And let me again, I'm conscious of those of you who can't see. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's take it from 125. Let's go 150. 
Feeling a bit saucy. First one. Apparently, Arsenal are interested in replacing technical director Edu um, in former winger Mark Overmar. The Dutchman who spent three years at Highbury is currently the director of football at Ajax. Um, like you can see here, earlier this earlier this week, it was reported that Overmars could potentially be out of out of Ajax. So again, that might be where this rumor is coming with. You know, he's actually if you type in his name on Google right now, he's linked with Manchester United. He's previously been linked with Arsenal, um, and apparently he wants out of Ajax. So beyond that, I don't think there's much truth in the rumors. Also, when you look at it, the club are always talking about stability. The club are always talking about changes. Now, there's going to be more changes at Arsenal, but you all know, people, we did a madness in terms of streamlining. You know, scouts went, coaches went, people that have been there and part of Arsenal's framework for a long time. There's been changes at all different levels. Um, and we talk about stability, you know, and obviously Raul and Mislintat and Glazides and all of these guys very recently have, have moved and, and left Arsenal. And we've done one project and gone for another. And we're now here with Edu. You know, on one hand, there is logic. You know, Eddie might be out of his depth, move him on, get somebody else in. But if we're talking about stability, this doesn't, you know, to get rid of a man that's been in the job two minutes and, and have to do the same thing again with Overmars, then it, it it sounds a bit hypocritical. Now, admittedly, I'm not too sure how difficult um, Edu has his role, because although I feel he needs to be doing a bit more, I am concerned with his inexperience and the fact of, you know, his inexperience is very new to the role and he's been given too much importance like we've got rid of people and he's the first line of contact you know the, there's, there's just just way too much and and he's naive and he's even you know Raul Sanye's job rather than bring someone else in his duties were split between Vinay and, and Edu I get it less people doing more things on one hand it makes it makes sense but on the other hand you know you can be a jack of all trades, master of none. You know, what is Edu? Is he going to do the sporting director thing? Is he going, what is he? You can't be a, a book, a book smart man, like a, a numbers guy and a, and, a, and, a, and a football man. You obviously can, but look at Woodward. Woodward is making the wrong decisions because he's a commercial man. He's not a football man. You need both of them. And, you know, I would be open to getting rid of Edu for Overmars. You know, Overmars is more experienced. I think that's what we need. You know, I think obviously with being at Ajax, I think within that remit, of course, Ajax is different and work permits makes it different but and what well, my point being I think Kronke needs to spend more I don't think we've spent enough as a club but at the same topic I like I said, you could two truths can you know two things can be true. I don't think Kronke spent enough, but at the same time, we have spent money. We've mismanaged. Look at many of these signings that we spent big money on. They haven't, you know, they haven't hit the ground running, you know, really and truly. They haven't been a con a, a complete success. They've been hot and cold. They divide opinion. Pepe, Lacazette, Granite Xhaka, Mustafi, you know, Lucas Perez weren't as that expensive, but 20 odd million for my man. You know, free transfers, 100 k for Kalajinac, a three year deal for William, you know, bringing in Mikatarian. These things have not worked out so and though I don't think Kronke spent enough I don't I, and I do think you know when how much can you do your job when you're having to beg for 45 million to get parted for Edwin and Vinay but you know Overmars has worked where money isn't a thing so again can you get better targets like I said if you can't get parted in our marquee names yeah it shouldn't be a thing. You should be able to get two players with those skill sets that might be unknown. Cool, and cool. You can't get a household name. Can you go and get a young Brazilian lad that's that that no one knows of, or a young lad that's just come from Africa and he's playing in France and he can come be a success? You know, Over Mars is good with finding the next gen. Not obviously, it's not just him, but finding the next generation. So I think with within the remit. I think he'd be able to find better players and more value for money. And I think there's more of an urgency with Overmars. The man was, you know, was trying to pimp out Hakim Ziyech to sign for this football club for 30 odd million. Our loss is now Chelsea's gain. And like you can say, he's credited with all of these, you know, these sort of signings. And obviously Ajax have gone on to make money for the vast majority of them. You know, the lit went United, when went Juventus apologies, the Young's gone United, um, Van der Beek's gone United, the lit's gone Juventus, you know, Frankie de, um, Frankie de Jong, I think, is a good midfielder, but hardly done anything at Barcelona. And they've all went for big money. Well, decent fees. I think Donny van der Beek and, and Ziyech were quite cheap, but they still made a profit, I assume. Um, obviously, De Ligt and De Jong went for good money, and that's something Arsenal need to do. You know, Again, I don't want us to become a feeder club, but if we're talking about being self-financing, we need to do a lot better in that regards with stuff. We need to have better scouting. We, need to, we can't afford to make as many mistakes as other clubs in the market. And not too many Arsenal signings have been elite or good signings like of recent you know it's the teenies it's the it's the it's the um thomas Partey's, it's the 
Gabriels and for every one of the half decent signings for, for them, you're a bit baffled on the other business we've done sort of thing. It doesn't seem like we fit players to fit the remit or fit our system. We're not signing players that solve a piece to the puzzle. We're just signing players that have a breakout season or have a good season and we're taking it from there. And that's not sustainable, as you lot already know, people. Big up the 200 odd people in here. Please make sure you hit the like button. So as you can see, people, for what it's worth, I don't think Miss Lintat... I'm missing to apologies over Mars is going to come to Arsenal. Of course, I would love it. I'm not, I don't really care about being an Arsenal man and all of these sort of things. I just care about can you do your job? But obviously, with over Mars, he's spent three years at Arsenal, he knows the club, and he's good in his he's, he's good in his position. So it's a it's a double whammy in a positive sense. That's what I mean, people, when I say I don't just want man who have played for the club for the sake of it. You know, if you're a technical director, be a good technical director, and there you're and then you're a bonus. When I'm talking at boardroom level. Overmars would be that. My only thing with Overmars, as we know, with the Dutch, you know, the Dutch are very, in a positive way. I like how Dutch and French people are in life and in a football spe spectrum. You even saw it with Van Persie. Um, you know, you've even seen it with Van Persie. People are very vocal. People are very open. You know, they'll say things for what it's like. And when I look at Arsenal, they don't really like man like that. Like, I think Edu is a bit... I think Edu's actually had to calm it down a bit because he seemed very vocal. And it does, to me, look a bit like Edu's more hands-off than he was because, you know, I don't really see him travelling with the team. It looked like he was part of the furniture. He was involved in the dressing room and stuff. It looks like he's taking a back seat. Maybe he feels he's putting too much pressure on Arteta or, you know, Arteta's being undermined with his constant presence but that's what I want to see and I think Overmars is potentially too outspoken for it to be a thing here but I would love it to be a thing people I would really like it to happen big up yourself Ma I'm doing good my guy we've got a super chat always appreciative apologies DG for being off topic but have you considered having a live calling show with your subscribers and patrons calling in I've considered it don't know how it worked and what I wouldn't want is prank calls but if there is a way to get around all of that then I'm all for that my guy there's 200 of you in here please make sure you're hitting the like like button please make sure you are looking at the pinned message you know i've already given you the information everton versus arsenal live watch along live from 4 45 after that there'll be another live stream where i'll react to the game um mars has said big up yourself we need someone like missling tap back and again i think the same but when i look at it now even with raul sanye i do think people are crippled in this job in that they're kind of silenced when they're trying to do a thing a certain way. They aren't because I don't think we did the missling tat thing properly. You know, we got a couple signings, but we didn't do it properly. And ultimately, missling tat saw an opportunity to power grab sort of thing. And he tried to, you know, it became him versus Raul. And that led to his demise, people. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, man. Big up yourself, Matt. Big up Dialer Square. You know, I try to really um, bring out good content. So it means a lot with the high praise, my guy. You know, big up yourselves. Um, people deluded. Come on, man. Come on, come on. You know, big up everybody locked in. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. William does get away with murder and it is a mockery that he's allowed to go to Dubai and it's all of these sort of things going on. Big up yourselves, people, for tuning in. This is some love. This is some absolutely lovely green tea and honey, people. I don't know. I would like to see him in the squad, but if he's not fully fit, what's the point? I don't want man injured. You know, I like that he's fit ahead of schedule. You're saying they were saying we're not going to see him until the new year. We saw him almost a month or so earlier. You know, I want him to be fit. Look at the party thing. You rushed him back for a battle against Spurs and you've now lost the war because now we go into an Everton team where you need Partey and Gabriel. You've got neither. You know, that's where we're showing our inexperienced people. Um, Thank you, man. Thank you. It means a lot, my guy. If you're new here, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Will said, have a good day, DG. Fingers crossed for Arsenal, as I feel is that all we can do. And you're right. I can't add anything. All we can do is hope and pray and watch the game. And there's and there's there's nothing more to it other than that, people. But like I said, in relation to Overmars, I don't think beyond the paper talk, beyond the pressure on, on Edu's role, I don't think there's any truth to that, you know. Again, was he not on the list for people that were meant to get the role that Edu went with? And I just think with people like Edu, he's new to the role, you know, it's, it's good for his CV. I just think we want people that can be controlled and, and whatnot. And it concerns me because, again, I don't, I think experience is overrated in general in life and thingy, but it's, it can never be overstated. You can never, un, you can never undervalue experience. I do think man just use this experience thing as a sort of whatever. Now, let's move on to William Gallas. Now, I'm not going to lie, people. I don't like Gallas. 
You know, I, I don't, I've always hit that. I'm never like Gallas. I think he's an absolute disgrace of an Arsenal captain. I think he put the number 10 position, a uh, number 10 shirt into dispute. I think he set the precedent of why we shouldn't sign people from Chelsea. You know, Gallas, the only thing I'll give him for, ironically, was scoring the winner against Chelsea. I hated Gallas with all my heart purely from a footballing terms. I hate the fact that, you know, he's got some sort of stature within Arsenal that I'm actually seeing him when we're, you know, we're talking to Colo and former players. He's in the room on Arsenal's websites. Get the hell out of here, you know. And I might have question marks over Mikel Arteta, but just because this guy said it, people, I'm I'm disagreeing. You know, he's one of them. Mate. It's a cat and mouse thing. Just because you said it, like, Galas could say Thierry Henry is the best footballer to have ever played for Arsenal and in the Premier League. Just because of that, I'm going to say, no, it was ten it's Dennis Burkham, it's Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't like... I don't like Galas. I don't like Galas. I don't like Galas. And you get it. Big up Vieira, yeah? I'm not going to rub out Vieira, but, you know, you're just calling for Vieira for no reason. If you've looked at Vieira's last job at Nice, it didn't end well. You know, it's same with Thierry Henry. Fantastic players, question marks over the coaching. Man can sit here and say, yeah, Vieira knows the club. You know, he's tough. That's what we need. But you can't come here with that because he's going to lose it. We know these players need to go. I'm not... Listen, bear of these players are played under Bear, man. I don't like when players turn on managers because they're all crap. They will turn on Patrick Vieira very quickly. They'll buy into the stuff of being an Arsenal player and stuff. But I'm not going to lie, Patrick Vieira's tactics look a bit shaky. And, his, you know, the way he digs out players and his man management looks a bit concerning, you know. And he he's good if you have the players that are around from his generation in terms of mentality when you can bollock them. It would not end well for Patrick Vieira. Of course, I'd love to be wrong. Um, and ironically, this man just got sacked as well. So would Vieira even want to jump in straight at the deep end? I'm sure because it's Arsenal he would, but it doesn't make sense, Galas. And where's your man? managerial um, thingies, man. Neither you nor Arteta should really be involved with Arsenal because neither of you are, are held in high regards, but it is what it is. Let me change... Oh, that's too bright, man. I can't see that. Let me change the writing to something else. Let's do an orange. Um, the ex-Gunners defender backed his fellow Frenchman to turn Arsenal around after a miserable start to the season. Where Did you say any of this about Arteta when he won the FA Cup? I'm not saying Galas is wrong in saying Arteta is out of his depth and whatnot, but still, he said, I think maybe the issue at the moment is that Mikel Arteta is not the right manager. For me, he doesn't have that experience to manage a big club. That's a valid point. I was surprised when he came in. And to be honest, even as Pep Guardiola's assistant, you need experience as a manager to come into a club like Arsenal, which is true. But we all know trainer coaches is the way it's going. And at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't really want Vieira to be fair with you. As a man and, and as a captain and all these things, I love Vieira. But what I've seen with him as a manager, you know, I don't really think he was a success in, in America like that. The knees thing didn't really work out for him, you know. It didn't it didn't happen for him. You know, he, he said, when they chose Mikel Arteta to come in and replace Emre, in my mind, Patrick was the name I thought they should have gone for. I don't know how close he was or if he's still in the running at all, but I was surprised they didn't mention his name. Patrick has more experience than Mikel because he's managed in America and he spent time in Nice. I mean, Xavi spent time in Qatar. It hardly means he's ready to manage the other teams. Again, and I do think, again, I'm not excusing Arteta because the very few things Arteta can control, he hasn't done enough. But, did you say that last season? Again, I just don't like Galas. So just shut the fuck up about my football club, pussy. Like, just shut up, fam. Just shut up, Galas. So not, not, you're not even you're not even saying anything wrong. But I just I just want to disagree with you. I just don't like you. I don't like William Galas. You know. And even if I quickly look at it, people, you know, Galas, shut the hell f up, man. Just shut the f up, talking nonsense. People, let's, I don't even want to rub out Patrick Vieira, but I'm just I'm just gonna quickly scroll down to his to his managerial career. You know, at the end of the day. You know, he led, you know, uh, to be fair, he did all right in, in, in New York. He led them from 17th to 4th in his first season and then second in 2017. Um, you know, he obviously used to use Jack Harrison, who's now at Leeds. Um, for Nice, it didn't work out, people. In his first season in charge, he led them to 7th place, one place greater than what they had achieved the previous campaign. So as we said, you know, he's done all right, but the man management's been a thing, people. And it's not lasted long enough, you know. Again, this is and when you look at it, that's how it's going to happen at Arsenal. So I wouldn't have minded Patrick Vieira, but you you can't move like one is Pat, one is Pep Guardiola and the next one is is, is just a, is an armchair manager. It doesn't it doesn't make much sense. So just shut the fuck up, William Gallas. Um, get me big baby, big baby man. Come, oh uh, well, Gallas was trash. That's why it's irrelevant. F Gallas, bro. F Gallas, man. You absolute disgrace, bro. Absolute disgrace. Um. What do I think is next for Saliba? Apologies, people, because I want to make a note of this so I can clip it up. As you lot know me, I'm the clip-up king. 
So what? This is twenty nine minutes. Let's say thirty. For me, with Saliba, it's go out on loan, man. I, I, I'm, you know, you can talk about wanting to use him and he's doing better in training and things like that. But January, he has to go out on loan. He needs to play first team football. Is he? If he isn't going, if it isn't going to happen here, you know. Um, Kevin Campbell spoke about, it and we might, have, we might even, we might as well look at it quickly because I think I included those notes just in case we always, we never had anything to say, people. That's that's Ian, right? But. This is Kevin Campbell. He said, apparently Saliba has made great strides in training. Mustafi is going to leave at the end of the season. That is a done deal from both sides and Saliba needs minutes. So why not give him the minutes that Mustafi is getting? To me, it makes no sense. I'd like to think Arteta would use Saliba in the Europa League and FA Cups we have coming up, games we have coming up, rather than sending them out on loan. I would like him to be involved. I would like him to learn on the job, but me immediately, I don't think it's that deep if he's not involved. This is me speaking before the fiasco of him not getting minutes and us not understanding. I think Saliba needs to go out on loan. None of this messing about thing. I think he should get minutes here and learn on the job, but go and let him go out on loan, whether that's England. I've even seen Leeds are linked with him, now, the latest of clubs linked with him. Back to St Etienne, where apparently he was close to, or apparently now he wants to stay in England. Just send him out on loan so he can play games. Send him out on loan to a club that play from the play out from the back, you know, and and their philosophies is closely aligned with us. Either do that or send him to under a manager where you'd say they're a real defender. Like you can't you can't go to Chelsea, but you I mean you can't go to Spurs. But let's just say this: in an ideal world, if he if Jose wasn't there and this would makeshift world, Saliba was wanted by Jose, I would let him go. Because you can say whatever you got to say about young players. When it comes to Jose Mourinho and centre halves, they have a good, they have a good, they have a good time. His CV is immaculate with it. Was he not the one that put Sergio Ramos there? I could be wrong on that. He, you know, you know, Tashebi, you know, at, at United, he was getting a lot of love under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Who gave him his debut? You know, man brought out of all the young players that haven't got game time at Spurs. Who's got game time? Tenganga, you know. Eric Dyer is a bit older, but he's made him play well at centre half now and really take into that role. So if you can send Saliba somewhere where, first and foremost, I want them to play forward football and play up from the back and all of these sort of things. But if it's not that and he can go somewhere where he can really learn how to defend and polish up, I'm all for that. Because what I see with Saliba, I see a good defender. I see a good mentality. I see someone who can play up from the back. I see someone um, that's got good positioning, someone that's that, that's consistent but he's still very raw. He gets flat-footed aloft. His pop, his positioning can improve, you know, defending from wide, wide areas. Sometimes I like that he tries a difficult pass, but he needs to be a bit more refined. He needs to go out and get game time, you know, and that's something that needs to be done in January. I can't understand what's going on because, again, my point is, I think I think Arteta with young players is overstated. You know, I don't think when push comes to shove, why he doesn't care about these young players like that? Because with the exception of Eddie, you know, he's gone. He's he's kept faith with William. He'd rather use Mustafi and allegedly offer a new contract than give Saliba new game time. He's persisting with Xhaka and these underperformers. He'd rather go with Bellerin than someone else for a chance. So he's sticking with the experienced players for instant results, and it's not being backed up. So I don't know how much football Saliba is going to get. So Saliba needs to go elsewhere and play football. Football. Um, you know, and for me, I have to question Arteta because again, you know, you're putting your faith in these experienced players and you're seeing that allegedly the Louises, the Williams, they, the Jackers, they're all turning against you in many different ways, at least with these young inexperienced man largely the defense feel a sense of loyalty to you. Like Nelson, you know, if you play him, you'll feel a sense of loyalty. Joel Willock, you know. And, and all of these other young players. So I don't get it with Saliba. Um, it, you know, between Arteta and the loan manager and everyone connected to this club, it's a shambles. But that's something I want to see sorted in January, people. He needs to go out on loan. You know, we need to sort out a loan for him. We need to bring in a midfielder. You know, Balogun's the one for debate. What happens with him? You know, there's a lot to be decided in January. There's a lot of business to, to, to want to do, people. So... You know, I I, I want to see Saliba play football. I'd imagine next is him going out on loan. But I'd love for the turn of the year to, for him to get game time. And even then, yeah, this is where they fucked it because, you know, he's not going to play in the, in the quarterfinal against Manchester City on Tuesday. Yeah, we've got an FA Cup game against Newcastle. Is he going to throw him in there considering our form? I don't know. He's not going to throw him in the league for whatever reason. Europa League, what, we've got Benfica now. Is he going to throw him in there in Portugal away from home? No. So you would have felt they would have got game time. And for me, once again, this screams that there's been no real plan. There's been, like how we are reactive off the field, like how we've been reactive with signing players, we've shown ourselves to be incredibly reactive with the development of players. And this is a pet peeve of mine because... 
We just get, we just harp on about potential. It doesn't feel like there's building blocks at Arsenal to really develop these players. You know, we, we're here with Wilshere, with Ramsey. Well, Ramsey developed, but Wilshere, Ramsey, Walcott, Ox, and the rest of them. And they were talented lads, but we're sat here year in, year out. Are they a winger? Are they a centre mid? Are they a striker? Whatever. Oh, they've got ability. How are we going to make Saliba, that France international, that Arsenal regular, that Rolls Royce of a defender? What can we... OK, cool. You don't think he's ready for first team now. OK, cool. What are we going to do for the next year? Where is he going to play on loan? Then after 12 months, we want him here. What are we going to do to make Joel Willett that player? What are we going to do to make Reese Nelson? What are we going to do for Smith Rowe and Maitland and the rest of them? Don't get twisted. Some men are not going to be level. Some men can be sold and whatnot. But I don't think we develop. We have a clear development plan in place. We try to do too much and ultimately little and when I look at our loan spells you know we've had mixed success in terms of loan spells really like when you look at Matt Smith it looks a success and things like that but we've had shaky loan spells generally look at Eddie and Ketia you know Eddie and Ketia hardly increased his worth and stock in the team with the lead spell he came Arteta gave him a chance so there's many things that I get annoyed about really and truly people um so yeah man big up yourself it means a lot man thank you for your praise my guy uh Mr 86 Tiger said, you're the realest, bro. Your content and energy is like no other. I really appreciate that, my guy. I'm trying. Big up the 347 of you locked in. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. I don't think I get the views and the clout and the engagement levels of other people, but we keep working, man. Can't understand how I can't get a thousand views on the live stream and things, but we keep working, man. Big up yourself from Singapore. Your, I think your work rate is superb and it is second to none. I'm trying, man. Like I said, next year, my work, it's not about working hard. It's about working smart for me personally. Um, so, yeah. And that's it. He can be right about Arteta and wrong about Vieira. He just said, oh, I just want Galas to shut the fuck up. Pardon my language. That's, 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 that's just what I want to see, man. I just don't give a crap about Galas. Like, it's just because Galas is saying it. I'm onto him, you know. On to him. To be fair, in relation to Saliba, right now, he just needs to focus on playing. And I don't get it because for me, if I'm Saliba and you've told me, you know, you fought for me to join this club, you've told me this, you've told me that, and the language has changed, I'm looking at it a bit shaky. Like, you'd rather play Mustafi, who is not the future, who is not signing a new deal and, and all of these sort of things. It, it's crazy. It, it makes absolutely no sense. Big up you lot. Big up you lot. Big up yourself, Luke. Come on, S. We keep working, man. Rome weren't built in a day. You know, I think my journey is different. So we got to keep rising. We got to keep working, man. Everyone has their time, man. Bro, the Gallas sure as hell don't work for me, man. And that's what I like about Arsenal fans. We've all united just to tell Gallas to shut the hell up. Big up, Junior. Deluded a Wobie or Ox choose one. I'd rather Oxlade Chamberlain. I think he's got more to his locker. He's more my sort of player. But big up, it will be and whatnot, man. What are you lot got to say, people? What are you lot saying? You lot are active in the comments, innit? Please make sure you're active in the comments and you're as active in the comments as you are on my live streams. Please make sure you hit the like button, people. Please make sure you hit the like button. A man said, DG dressed up like ET in front of in front of the bike. Because I like you, I'm never going to do you dirty. But if you was the next guy, I'd have said, this is what your mom got me for Christmas. So I'm a lie, I'm a lie. And Galas did let us down when it truly mattered. I think Pochettino would be more closely aligned with Arsenal, but I would like Allegri, but I don't think it would end well for Allegri. You get hella frustrated that we're doing nonsense. Quite crazy, man. Please make sure you're hitting the like button, people. And to be fair, to be fair, if you're playing in the Premier League full stop for a ball playing team, you have to expect to be pressed. I don't think that's where Saliba struggles. I just think there's minor things off the ball, positioning, not getting caught flat footed. These are things where you'd expect a 19 year old to have really and truly. You know, there's a chance to develop, man. There's a chance to develop, man. Saliba would have learned more if he was part of these, mad, not that I want him to be because it can kill his confidence, but if he was part of these you know, the Villas, the Wolves, these defeats, he would lead, he would learn a lot more. That's what I, we need to throw players in at the deep end. Don't get it twisted. When I have seen certain players get thrown in, I can understand why they can't, but you can you can do as much training and travelling as much as possible. You need to be thrown in, you know. Holding was starved of football. Why? That's probably why he's not kicked on. So, um, Mavropanos had injuries, starved of football. We didn't understand either he plays here or go out on loan. It's crazy, man. It's absolutely crazy. Free Saliba, man. If Smith Rowe isn't going to play football, another one, send him out on loan. Send him out on loan. Send him out. I want Smith Rowe to play. But yeah, man, you know, 
What's good, DG? With Zaha's contract running down at Palace and Laka seeming out the door, do you think there's a chance for a bid in the summer? I would like him, but I'm not too sure if... I don't know Zaha's contract. Didn't he sign a new contract the other day? I'm not too sure if it's running down and things like that, but is what it is. Big up you lot. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. I appreciate all of you lot locked in each and every time, man. It means the world. Let's move on and let's get back to this Google Doc, people. So, yeah, man, that's, Ke that's Kevin Campbell. That is Kevin Campbell. Um, moving moving away from that though, people, and like you said, we've we've spoken about this. We're gonna get into our in a sec. I just wanna because that's another link, so I just want to get over the Google Doc. So let's leave this here. Wrong, let's just say that's marked. Scroll down. I've never watched this play in my life, people. But in terms of transfer news, apparently Arsenal are reportedly monitoring the progress of Slavia Prague winger Sima. I've seen I've only seen him on YouTube in a couple of highlights. I'm not going to sit and say I know, man. He's linked with West Ham as well. Apparently, the 19-year-old who has scored 13 goals in 18 appearances this season has turned head with a number of impressive performances for the Czech side. Apparently, Juventus are said to be tracking the Senegalese teenager. He's valued at around 50 million and he's been dubbed the next Henri. You can see why he's linked with all of these clubs. Naturally, you know, I'm sure... Wait, yeah, I'm sure I've seen this shoot in the Europa League. I could be wrong. I don't know him religiously, but I'm sure this name rings a bell. To which... It makes sense. You know, you hear a young, talented lad playing for a team that you could probably buy him from. You hear next Henri, you hear the goal scoring stats. Play people should be looking at him, you know. He is still inexperienced, as you can see. The winger has played less than 20 senior matches in his professional career, but is very highly rated by Slavia. Looks set to be a star for his club for his club for his country's national team. And he's 19. So I'm not too sure how that would be affected by work permits because he's not played too many times for his country. He's not playing right now for the biggest team or in the biggest league. So it might be work permit issues, but we should be monitoring a young man like this. And he's been linked with West Ham. And their player Suchek has said, from what I see, I have to say I'm very excited about him. His goals are very similar to what I've been scoring, Ra. Right? I'm I'm glad that such a player was found, but it's not just about that. He shows 1v1 qualities, finishing, just a typical winger. I have to say that the guys or the media around West Ham know about him. I'll only be happy if another player from Slavia came, but it's still far away. He's still a young player. He has to prove it, but a lot of people know about him and notice, notice him. Only good for him. Facts, really and truly. You know? Facts. What more can you say on that? Um... It's quickly skipping for a second, people. As you lot know, there's been a lot of noise in relation to Lucas Torreira and is he going, is he, is it's not happening for him at Atletico? Is he coming back to Arsenal? Is he not? Apparently his agent has more or less said, you know, he's, he's not coming back. I didn't copy and paste the rest, but he has no intention of returning to Arsenal in January, despite, um, despite, um, what's been going on. Um, and we'll have to see, man. And, and I guess Torreira has to ask himself, is it a me problem? Because it's not working out for you at Arsenal. It didn't work out for you currently at Atletico. So it might be a me problem. Moving away from that, and apparently Hertha Berlin wanted to sign Reese Nelson in the summer and they could revive their interest in January. Um, apparently Arsenal are looking at Fabio Vieira. I think he played against Manchester City. He's a decent little player for Porto. He's part of the golden generation of Portugal. He is. He can play a pass. He puts himself around. He doesn't mind putting a foot in. I do like the look of that lad. And he is only going to get better and better, really and truly. So I wouldn't mind him, but it would probably be difficult to do that in January. And I'd imagine they're asking for 50 million. Is Arsenal going to do that? Again, the bulk of these links are coming from the Champions League, in my opinion. You know, this man, Manor Solomon, you know, the shot to the next winger, he's been impressive. Apparently, Arsenal and Leeds are looking at him, which, again, unless he's better than what we undoubtedly have, which I think he's a good player and I don't think he's head and shoulders, there's no point signing a winger. We've been linked with Marcus Turam as well, who's been doing very good for Gladbach for a couple of years and has done quite well in the Champions League for them. But he has missed a couple of sitters this season for club and country people in my opinion um moving away from that and it kind of goes on to the hour thing apparently Mikel Arteta wants to sign both Hossam Awa and Isco Arsenal was the last club to inquire about Isco's situation although Awa's name is also on the agenda however Arsenal cannot afford to sign both and will have to make a decision soon and we have heard with you know the TV stuff going on at, going on in Lyon or going on at France. Lyon might be forced to sell players and look at their situation, um, which we might as well try in the summer again, sort of thing. I would only take Isco on loan. I don't think we should be looking to take someone like that on a permanent. People really and truly um, moving away from that and going on with our. You've got AFC Bell here. Um, you know you've got AFC Bell. 
I thought I would copy and paste this tweet. You know, he's he's he or she or whoever it is has spoken at length about um about um Hotsum Awa. So we're gonna see what that one says. So we're gonna see. Please make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. Please make sure you've hit the like button. Please make sure you've um obviously checked out the pinned tweet as well. Live stream 445 Everton versus Arsenal live watch along. Hilal is saying, take a shot every time DG says, really and truly, you'll be here a long time. Really and truly, people, it is what it is. It would get long, people. Hit the like button, you know, support the channel. I wouldn't mind him going to Aston Villa. I wouldn't mind him staying in the Premier League, man. I wouldn't mind him staying in the Premier League. Not too sure I speak gospel, but it means, it means the world that you're liking what I have to say, my guy. Appreciate that each and every time, man. <laughs> Deluded comes on here and starts spitting off the top like he's little baby. Keep going, G. Your grind and shine is noticed. I keep trying, man. We keep fighting, man. We keep going. We keep going. So again, January is a difficult time. Will we see? Will we see any business happen? I'm not too sure. This tea is great, man. And actually, let me stop the screen sharing because for temporarily for a second, people, because I want it. It's not flicking. It's not sharing the tab. Share screen, do this again. Uh, application window, do the tab. Yep, share Twitter with me, please. All right, so now you can see Twitter, people. Move from me, man. What's all of this? Anyways, people. All right, we're gonna. I'm not. I'm obviously not gonna sign in right now because the man can see my thing. But what's going on? All right, I'm gonna sign in because it's not letting me. It, I swear down, people. It let me do this before. Let me sign in quick. Let me sign into Twitter quickly, people, just so I can hit the translate button. I'm not going to sit here and, and cap to you lot. I cannot speak Arabic. Big up all my Arab ones here and all my Arabic speakers. Um, but we're going to sign in. Just got to do the code that it sends to my phone number because I've got serious protection across this. Here we go. As you heard, that's the ding on my phone. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's sign in. And then get back to sharing off this screen, people. Technical difficulties. We're learning. We're trying, people. Share screen. Get back. Let's get back into this. Google tab, you know. And now we're back, people. Now, here we are. Our one. Now, I, I respect you lot that can speak Arabic and do know what this says. I don't, however. Um, apparently, it is understood that Arsenal are still in contact with our, or better yet, Hossam Awa's camp. The club has sent clear signals to the player and his family that Awa, that Arteta, sorry, intends to make Awa the core of the team. So what does that tell you? You know, whatever Arteta is doing tactically, not that we can see it, you know, he's saying that Awa is the target, he's what I want at the base. And we did hear that Arteta wants Awa above everything else. But for a variety of reasons, it made more sense to go for Partey and get Partey. I, you need both. You need the skill set of both. But when it came down to it, clearly Lyon were in a tougher negotiating position. You know, if there was no release clause for Partey, we probably wouldn't have got Partey, um, you know. So Awa's got to sit on his hands. For me, it's best that he stays until the summer and just gets on with his football again. You've got our Euros to try and compete for. It can't be helpful with all the speculation over his future. I would like him, you know. He's what I call an 8.5. He's not as creative as people make out, but he wants the ball. And I think any serious team goes for Awa and Partey or gets that skill set. And I think the club, they tried to go for Awa. They tried to play hard ball over Partey all summer. And then they saw, OK, cool, we're actually going to have to pay his release clause here. And we heard a variety of reasons for it not working out. Arsenal did all they can. Arsenal were close. Leon played hardball. Our agents with more money will never know. There's a lot of stuff. But apparently the player's grandfather from his mother's side, not sure on the relevance of that, but apparently um, is part of the player's camp decision-making trinity. And he was one of those who welcomed Arsenal's interest last year. So it seemed like he's... And he's been linked with PSG. Apparently he's open to PSG. Apparently he's open to Juventus. Apparently he's open to Arsenal. And that's what he should do. You know, I'm sure the Madrids and the Juventus is these are clubs you want to go to. But can you make it intermediate step? You look at Shabozlai, a player we've missed out on. You know, he's gone to Leipzig. He stays at Leipzig for a couple of years. You know, he's going to go to Bayern Munich and these bigger clubs if he keeps developing. Apparently, um, our agent urges him to transfer to a club participating in the Champions League or at the very least a European competition. Apparently, we were, we were favourites last summer. And for me, you know, he you should want to leave to play in a Champions League club, but you need to go to a team where you're going to feel important. And arguably, you don't want to suffer the fate. Our, um, our doesn't want to suffer the fate of Bamiyan, 
Lacazette, even Partey now of not playing in the Champions League, potentially not even playing in Europa, basically, because we only got into Europa by the skin of our teeth last year. And it looks like we're going to have to rely on certain other circumstances. And again, if Arsenal do not get Europa League football or some stature this year, how much is that going to harm us even more? Because again, I only, we, we know the loss of we know the loss of earnings with COVID, but it's only a year on or a year to the day or so do you really factor in those changes. So with COVID, with a lack of European competition, with fans not going to games too tough, how much is this going to make Arsenal's problems even worse for next summer? And once again, we heard, like we heard in the summer and we didn't see anything, where, our, where, where Arteta and Edu and all their man said, oh, we're, we're ready to react to the market in three, four different ways and this and that. I didn't see reaction because reaction for me is you don't get our well, bringing in another creative man, you know? We should still be talking about bringing in another midfielder away from party an hour, but you bring in another man. You know, a serious club brings in both them players or the skill set of both. So it's it's the bullish language ultimately to not move certainty as annoys me. And when you hear language coming out of mouthpieces like David Ornstein that Arsenal are well ahead of their planning for 2021, how well ahead can you be? If, you know, based on the current pressures around the manager, he might not be there. And like I said, there's a good chance we don't get European football outright unless we buck up our ideas. So if you're not getting that and that has a knock on effect, as we were shown last year with what we can spend, how much can you really plan? And this, this is why I say there's a direct correlation between how you behave off and on the pitch. Our failings on the pitch have directly correlated to our loss of earnings off it, which means we can't make improvements off it. Our lack of forward planning, learning from hindsight and applying better foresight, you know, off the field has affected us on the field. So it's a it's a, it's a serious negative cocktail, people. You can see this already. It does make for, it is a firmly a recipe for disaster, really and truly. And you can see how this contributes to failings and things like that. But that's that in relation to that. Sorry, I've missed out a super chat. Um, that I've missed out a super chat. Apologies, PE people. Please make me aware if I'm missing things out. Big up Devil's Delight. That's for the hard liquor you might need after the Everton result. Big up DG. Big up yourself, my guy. I've actually... <laughs> I've got the rare nef on deck, but it's cool, man. It's cool. I'll get myself some more smarties with that, man. Smash the like buttons. I'm always appreciative of you guys, people. Um, but that's that, people. Should we type in and see if there's anything else? Let's go back on AFC Bell's thing and see if there's anything else in that regard. So these are the rumours. This was on the 12th of December. What's this? This is in relation to Thomas Partey. Partey does not suffer from any tears or cuts as the injury was diagnosed, blah, blah, blah. Thomas started his... Treatment program on Wednesday and the club will follow him up on a response daily. The club sees January as a possible return date. So, yeah, he's not playing this this period. Um, yeah, man, it don't look like there's anything in that regards, people. Should we see if there's anything else? Let's check, check the usual sources. You know, we've seen all of this already, really. We spoke about all of that yesterday. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything. What Who's mentioning me? Okay, leave me alone. I wonder if I can type in Arsenal on Google if it stays here, people. Let me switch and see if it's staying. Yes, it actually is. Big up yourself, Dial a Square, for the super chat. Let me see what you said. DG, what can the club now do to keep Balogun? I've been told Liverpool are coming for him. Liverpool and everyone else and their nan. Give Balogun a pathway. You know, I don't think Balogun should... You, I wouldn't go as far as to say assurances that you're going to play, but I don't think Balogun, um, Balogun sees a... Um, sees a, a viable pathway sort of thing because he's again I would have thought with instant for instance nine subs are now allowed on the bench sort of thing you know he could have been on the bench I'd say give him a pathway it's great that he's played football but at the end of the day he's only played 61 minutes can he go to a team in Germany or a team elsewhere where he's about to play football where he can play where if he's not starting week in week out he's in and around that first team environment where he's on the bench and he has to take his chances and things he can't be playing 23s football and if I'm Balogun Again, I'd sit on my hands because Arteta can say they want to keep you and this, that, the other. I've played 61 minutes. I've got Lacazette at least for a year on paper ahead of me. A bam and a new deal. You've still got Tyrese and, 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 and Eddie and all of these guys. Martinelli's playing up front slash left wing. There's a lot to consider, people. There is a lot to consider. Um, so let's see if there's any Arsenal news, people. Any any real, real Arsenal news. Um, I don't know why it's, 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 it's with that. Ain't no one trying to hear about Theo Walcott. I don't really like these papers, people, but let's see this one. Leno, apparently Arteta disagrees with Leno. Let's see what this thing is saying. Going on, man. All these pop-ups doing a mad thing to me. I don't want to hear no videos playing. 
Apparently, Arteta says that the box stops with him after the Arsenal goalkeeper, Bert Leno, hit out at his own teammates. As you lot know, Leno said, we get cards, make mistakes, are disorganised. There are things that we have clearly addressed a thousand times in the end. That's a lack of focus among the players. Facts, you know, as poor as Arteta's tactics has been and whatnot, if you keep making the same mistakes, you have to take accountability. And what I like about Leno is what he said here, because what do I normally say, people? Losers take, losers blame, winners take accountability. Of course, the, not what even the Kalam ones like Xhaka, Xhaka is not the sole reason we are where we're at. But take accountability for the part you've played. And I see Leno taking that. I see Saka doing the same. I see Tierney saying the same. When I hear Leno saying this, when I hear Tierney saying we deserve the booze, when I see what Saka and even Gabriel are talking about, it makes sense. It's facts. We had from we, what I see by this first paragraph, people, in discipline. You can attribute purely this as indiscipline, but this is indiscipline. This is reactive and not being disciplined. If you have enough, you know, they always say, look at people that have habits, you know, you might have drug at drug addicts, apologies, you know. They've got to show discipline to kick that habit to say, no, I don't want to smoke that or I don't want to do this now. You know, we need to say, cool, we want to be organised. We're tired of being out of position. Midfielders, we're tired of not being there. Defenders, we're tired of seeing late runners and things like that. We're clearly not, you know, we're not learning. Again, whether Arteta's giving you, we heard Arteta, you know, he gives them analysis, he gives them homework and all of these positive sound bites. They're still doing the same thing. So maybe there's something wrong with what Arteta is doing or saying or how he's communicating. But there's also something with the players because at the end of the day, it's like boxing. Your boxing coach can give you all of the, 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 the tools and tell you this boxer is unorthodox, do this and that. But once you go into that ring and you get punched in your face, you need to, you're out there by yourself. And too many people seem resigned to defeat, you know. You, we fail to plan. And that's why we look nervous. That's why when we go or go down, we're not on this thing. And like he said, there is a lack of focus. All these things wouldn't be here. You, would, you wouldn't be up there for lack of clean sheets and lack of scoring goals. We would know what this Arsenal is about and this blueprint. And he also said, you know, the coach is not an issue in the change, change dressing room and there's no criticism of him. We criticise ourselves and the players know they are responsible. I honestly don't think everybody's on that. Um and apparently Arteta's changed it. And again, Arteta isn't going to do the blame game and blame his players and whatnot. But, you know, and he's looking probably to save some of his players because I guarantee not all the real guys in that team, they would have felt 100% what Leno said. They would have taken that in 100 because he's speaking facts. But, you know, some people are looking at us, oh, why are you doing that? You know, we, we, we've got a bunch of teams where when Tierney first came, bunch of players, sorry, where they said Tierney trains too hard. You know, certain fullbacks said but, um, Alexis wants to win too much. The culture of this club is a joke thing. Really, you know, Arteta said, "I take, I take full, I take full responsibility because at the end of the day, I pick the players that have to be on the pitch, and I have to be able to try and transmit to them and get themselves in a state of mind that they can control themselves." And that's facts. You are it, but the box stops with you; it falls with the manager, and and, he, and he's looking to save face. But at the same time. That's some nonsense. He also said, unfortunately, in football, everything can go so quick and emotions take apart. But I want the players to play with that freedom and take the pressure off them in this moment because it's really needed. The players can only take that themselves. And, you know, and he said that, in my opinion, is when you get the best out of them. And if you can't hack pressure, you shouldn't play for Arsenal or any team that's trying to do things or trying to um, be in a top six or whatever you're trying to do, because there's going to be pressure. It don't make no sense. So, Arteta, I hear what you're saying, but it ain't making sense, man. Big up yourself and apologies for leaving the super chat up there. I'm back, people. I'm back. What are you lot saying in the in the comments? You lot are moving mad. You know, over Marzin and Allegri in. I would love to see Martinelli feature, but again, only if he's fully fit do I want that man on the bench. There's no point him being involved in any other things. Um, it's soon landing. It's soon landing. Should we look at Buendia, people? Because there's been a lot of talk around Buendia and apparently, you know, Norwich have spoken about Buendia. Pardon me. Let's see if there's anything surrounding Buendia. There's all the Buendia links. Is this a thing? This is just saying he intends to play Premier League football next season. What did he say? Obviously, everyone was disappointed to get relegated. Everyone wants to play in the Premier League, but I was 100% focused to be in Norwich. Obviously, I want to play a higher level, but I'm here. I'm happy with the team, so I will give 100%. Percent. No, man, I'm sure I'm sure there was a thingy, man. Like, there was a... There were some comments surrounding Buendia people, like, um, from advisors speaking about Buendia sort of thing. So, let me type him in on Google. I mean, on Twitter. 
Is there any comments around Buendia? I'm sure there were some comments, but obviously it's not happening, is it? It's, it's, it's just not happening, folks. So make of that what you will. Um, can't find them. But let's go back to sharing the screen. And let's go back to this Google Doc, people. Big up everybody locked in. Please make sure you hit the like button. So, yeah, we, we've spoken about all of that, people. We've spoken about all of this. You know, in relation to Mezzi Ozu, it's more or less the same old, same old. Apparently, his agent has claimed that the 32-year-old is set to see out, see out his contract at the Emirates despite interest from elsewhere. And this tells you everything, people. Mezzi has another six months on his contract with Arsenal. Certainly, he has missed football. He is working hard to wear the Arsenal shirt again, and he'll continue to work. Crucially, it's this, though. I would like to clearly state our situation regarding Fenerbahce. Yes, we had meetings with them. We had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the club's top people. However, we can't have official transfer talks before January. We've received contract offers for Mesut all over the world. Fenerbahce's interest is also known. Nothing has changed for Mesut right now. Under these circumstances, it seems that Mesut will complete the season at Arsenal. So he wants to leave. A part of him probably wants to say bye to the fans and whatnot. But at the end of the day, the bed's been made in relation to that there will obviously be a lot of speculation will Ozil won't he be reinstated and be re-registered personally I feel regardless of what you think about Ozil we should allow him the chance to at least represent the club again I think we talk about class and things I I, I don't really whether I rate Ozil or not it doesn't really sit well with me that that's how a man is going to exit the team so we'll see what happens in that regard you know Ian Wright's been on to Edu and he has said can I say something because there's something I read with Edu who I was with during the Rapid Vienna game we had a chat and he's very energetic and I must admit Ian Wright must be in a rock and a hard place because he's still very much embedded into the club so he has to watch what he says but I can sometimes he frees it up um he said but I was very disappointed with something I read with Edu talking about William needing time. I can't have that. And I'd like to say to him if I saw him, because we don't want to be peddling that. And Edu's a hypocrite, you know. He said uh, he said William would hit the ground running and he's changed up his team. He said, we brought William in to hit the ground running. And when he came in, I read what you said about the player and that we need an immediate impact from. We signed him for three years, which was very dubious for a lot of players. I went, OK, William is good enough, a serial winner. And you look at the experience he brings. To hear we need to give him more time. I needed something to squeeze because that's not why we brought him. William needs that chat where someone needs to say, my friend, listen, you're here to hit the ground running. I'm not throwing him under a bus, but I'm trying to explain to Eddie that I cannot come and say these things when Arsenal in the position where we've signed the player for three years and he needs to hit the ground running. He's actually got an option of another year. He's on big money and he's playing. And in the same way, I think Xhaka, Bellerin and... We, and William, they sum up the way Arsenal have been. They sum up, they're not all to blame, but they sum up what Arsenal Football Club is. For Xhaka, not learning from mistakes, being mediocre. From Bellerin, never pushing yourself to be a real winner. And from William, there's no real pressure, whether you play good or not. It's just a freestyling thing. And man, are not really here for footballing reasons. All three of them scream comfortability to me personally, people, which is why they're at where they're at. Um, in in my humble opinion, people, that's just that's just me talking in 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 a sense, people. Um, big up yourself, please make sure you're hitting the like button. Arab one here, keep up the great content as a Liverpool fan, but love how you discuss about Arsenal. It means the world, my guy. It really means the world. I appreciate you guys and whoever you are, man. Um, tuning in. Big up, Mr. Palmer. You're done, no, you're done, no. Big up yourself, Fabio. Means a lot that you checked in. You know, big up everybody. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. Please make sure you're going to be there on my, you know, on my live watch along live from 4.45 UK time. You know, it's in the pin tweet. Please go and hit a like, hit the like button on that one. Go and hit the reminder so you don't miss out, people. Really and truly. Xhaka out. You know, I don't, I don't want to hound out players, but yeah, Xhaka is someone that needs to go. He is someone that needs to go. Big up yourselves. Come on, man. Appreciate that. And big up all the YouTube members, man. I'm seeing a, a lot of you in here, man. It means a lot. I would take Brendia. Apparently, they're saying 20 to 30 million. Personally, I, I think that's something we could do. But again, I don't really know Arsenal's financial situation. You know how this club is. You know how it gets people. Um, smash the like buttons. Come on, man. 300 likes needed now. There's 400 odd of you. Come on, people. You lot are violating. You lot are, you lot are violating. You know? Quickly, I want to speak about. Um, I want to. I'm trying to do my reviews in a in a different sort of way, people. So, I want to speak about the under 23s game yesterday, where obviously we defeated Leicester two goals to one. It means four consecutive wins in a row for the under 80 under 23s. Apologies 
former Arsenal man Vonte Daly Campbell played. And I think just the only disappointment I had is that we conceded a goal so late into the first half. But other than that, I think we was good, man. I think Miguel Aziz had a good game. I think Ben Cottrell pl played well as well, like you saw for his interception to play Aziz in the build-up for Balogun's goal. Um, Chambers scored, you know, Marie. I think Marie could have done better for the goal we conceded. It's a, it's a, it's just a, it's a dead ball situation. And I think he's just caught ball watching. Um, you know, it was a good game. Man, Balogun, the man in question among the goal scorers, scored the winner. Um, scored the winner. Chambers got among the goals. So again, I'm not too sure. I, you, you maybe Marie, you know, Marie or Chambers, maybe they have an opportunity. But you'd imagine that neither of these three, well, four including Balogun, but neither of these three defenders are going to feature for Arsenal's first team, sort of thing. Um, I haven't got it here. But we played a 3-5-2 and I really like this individual, Moller. As you lot know, he was nominated for Premier League player, player of this uh, player of the month a few weeks ago. Still think there's a lot more to come from him. Don't think he's setting the world alight, but you know, his hold-up plays good for a big man. He likes to link up play. You know, he likes to drop deep. He plays very well in a partnership with Balogun. He scored some good goals for us, you know, he scored some important strikes as well. Really impressed with, with Moller. And I was really impressed with Balogun. You know, I really like how Balogun gets on the last shoulder. He played well. I think Aziz played well. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a right back, but our first year scholar, Brooke Norton Cuffey, for me, quality game. Bombing down that right hand side, cutting and twisting, really and promising and really promising game. He was really good. You know, a couple of times he could have scored, a couple of times he could have set up a goal, a constant thorn in the in the side of Leicester. I think he had a really encouraging performance. I believe with him and Daniel Ayoke, who Murta Saka also rates very highly, we've got future stars of the future, man. And it's been a good week. I'll talk about it in the next live stream. But, you know, we've seen Arsenal's under-18s winning the FA Youth Cup and we've now seen our under-23s end the year on a high, you know. And with that, you know, it's been a tough year for our under-23s. Under There's been a lot of changes. Key players have gone out on loan. You know, a Leicester team is always difficult to play against. And I think we played well. Like I said, Aziz played well. Cottrell played well. You know, Ryan Oloboso on the left-hand side played well. And I think he actually got an assist for Balogun's um, goal in the, um, the, for the second, the, the one that made it 2-1. Like I said, you know, they were all involved for the 2-1. Um, you know, I really liked, I really liked the good moves, you know. It was a good move. It was a good move for this goal. Forgive me for the for the for the typo. Um, you know, it was a good move for our first goal. Chambers stabbed in the rebound. But I was impressed with how we started it mainly, people. We started very well. Like I said, in the first half, only thing I think we did disappointing was conceding on the stroke of half time from a dead ball situation. I think we looked good in this 3-5-2. I think individual players wanted it. I think there was movement. I think there was bravery on the pass. I think, you know, the tip, the usual suspects in the Balogans, the Azizes and Cottrells were on it. Um, you know, I think you know, even Marie played some good passes, as did Chambers, Saliba as well. Saliba was good on the ball from what you lot saw as well. Um, for me, man of the match would be Brooke, the young right back. I think he played well. But I was impressed with how we started. I think we started well. You know, we looked good down the right hand side with Brooke. I think apart from the occasional couple of counter attacks where it ended up with corners, there weren't really much from a Leicester perspective. You know, I think we deserved our we deserved our win really and truly. So I'm impressed with our boys. Uh, you know, what more what more can I can I really say? In that in that regards, people, it was a lovely performance from our boys and long may they continue. Um, of course, watching the ads helps, man. Make sure you watch the ads, my brother. Come on now. Um, and with that being said, if we quickly, you know, Premier League table two, Premier League two table. I want to see the reserves, man. I don't want to see. What... Yeah, look, with that being said now, people, I can share screen for you guys. In fact, let me cancel the share. Let me stop this share screen. And then go to the next one. You know, share screen again, tab. Da -da -da, Google Chrome, Premier League. That's what I want to share, people. And as you can see, we're ninth. To be fair, we was rock bottom. You know, staying in the division is our priority. You know, Man United got smacked like 6-1 to Chelsea. Chelsea have been playing very well, as have Manchester City. Blackburn and Derby are always going to be there. Um, we're ninth. You know, we've we, like, like I said, since that 1-0 defeat to Liverpool, we've put four wins on the trot. The only problem is there's only been one clean sheet there. Well, two clean sheets. We smacked them, as you can see. Tough result against Everton. Good to win there. 3 1 against Derby, another good result, and 2 1 against Leicester. So we've pumped a couple of teams above us, people. So hopefully we can keep moving up the table. As you can see, we're on 14 points. You know, four points separate second. Chelsea are running away with the lead, in my opinion. So I have to see. And as you can see here, we've got Southampton next, people. And their form's been a bit shaky. They won their last game. But they've been a bit shaky, you know, two losses, 
two wins, two losses and a draw. So we'll have to we'll have to see what happens in that regards, people. We really have to see what happens, people. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Big up everybody locked in. Please make sure you're hitting the like button. It's always appreciated. Um, he's not going to start him today. And you've got to be realistic. Saliba just played. Um, Saliba's, Saliba's um, obviously played yesterday. It's naive to expect him to play today. We, again, very naive. Quite tight, bro. Tighter than what Arsenal have been on, man. Yeezy breezy, bro. I wish I had an I wish I had an answer. Wouldn't you like to know? I actually do, you know. I actually do. Um, I've spoken about him before, and I'm gonna do a video when he officially signs. And just so that you have the receipts, I'm gonna replay when I spoke about him before he even became a thing at Arsenal. Um, there's actually some things I'd like to speak on regarding Arsenal and Arsenal staff members and deluded content, but I don't want to. I just this is why I keep pushing hard because let's just say you don't know who's watching, um, sort of thing. Hit up the likes, people. Hit up the likes. Hit up the likes. So, yeah, I don't think I've got anything else to speak about. We've touched on the under-23s briefly. You know, we've touched on a couple transfer news and, and all the rest of it. We've even spoken about Ian Wright. You know, we've been here for an hour and 10 minutes. Can't lie, people. I'm 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 going to get out of here. Like I said, please make sure you're in my watch along for um for the game. I'll be live from 4.45. Um, you know, allow me to enjoy my Saturday to some degree. So I'm going to get out of here and I'll hit you lot back in a couple hours. Information is in the pinned tweet. Please make sure you're looking across my YouTube community tab and I'll buck you lot soon, man. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for everything, man. So yeah, man, I'll be back, man. I'll be back soon, man. On that note, DG.